Good. Well, I'm going to talk. I've been given 20 minutes to do what often takes a little bit longer. Uh, and so if you find that all this stuff exciting, there's a much longer version of this talk, um, which you can find on YouTube. But um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the anthropology of Stack Exchange. Uh, it's a weird thing to talk about. Why are we talking about anthropology of a website? Um, well, we have 47 million people uh, visiting Stack Exchange all the time. Uh, and that's an awful lot of people. And when you start to deal with things on that scale, it's not merely uh, you know, a usability problem or an information architecture problem. Um, you actually get sociology. You actually get culture. Um, and um, you know, I think that the field of cultural anthropology is the one that best describes how people work together, how people uh, interrelate, how they create communities online. And that's the field um, that we study in, in developing, in the development of uh, Stack Overflow um, and later Stack Exchange. Uh, the first observation I, I want to give you is that when an, an architect or a city designer um, or somebody creates a physical place, uh, they inadvertently sometimes and sometimes intentionally uh, cause people to behave in a certain way. So the physical structure that you create will cause human beings to act in certain ways. Um, so some examples are fairly simple. You might accidentally create you know, a gentle curve, and then kids will go out there with skateboards. Um, if you, not accidentally, I suppose, but if you create a table, and you put two chairs on either side of the table, and then a grid that looks like an 8 by 8 grid, then old men will show up and start playing chess. Um, and this is a, a, an example of sort of starting with a particular uh, design and then behavior of people goes and adapts to that design that you created, which may or may not be intentional. So the Spanish Steps in Rome, which many of you have probably visited, are a good example of an unintentional uh, use case. You know, the purpose of the steps is that there are two roads there that meet at a piazza, and the two roads are uh, at different levels. And um, the, the, the height of the hill is so steep that you have to build steps there. You can't simply, um, you can't simply uh, build a road that goes up there. Um, so there's steps, but as a result, people come and they sit down on the steps all day long because uh, it's a very good place to rest. It's a good place to um, braid your friend's hair um, or to just hang out and, and watch the tourists. And that was unintentional, but once you see that happening, you can try to copy it. So at Times Square in New York, they created a staircase that goes absolutely nowhere in hopes that tourists and hippies would come and sit on the, on the steps and braid each other's hair. And it was a little bit less successful um, because the staircase doesn't really go anywhere. But once again, you create a particular physical um, structure. And so, um, so what I really want to talk about is the physical structures we created on Stack Exchange and on Stack Overflow and what we paid attention to and the intended behavior and what, what we intended them to create and um, why that made uh, Stack Overflow so successful. Um, um, the, so that I've got a list of considerations that we, that we put in. The number one consideration is, you know, what do people think when they first get to the website? What is their first impression? Um, when you see Stack Overflow for the first time, do you think, I, I want to belong to this? Do you think this is going to be useful to me? Or do you think, I don't understand it at all? I think that a lot of people building websites these days, if you ask them, who do you want to go to your website? They will tell you, everybody and they will A-B test their way into the world's most inclusively possible, most inclusive as possible homepage that tries to attract everybody and be everything to everyone. And um, we thought right away that, that we wanted to have a web page that is uh, sort of violently uh, disengaging to people that were not programmers. We wanted, if they were not interested in coding, we wanted them to go away as quickly as possible. Um, we, looked, uh, we looked around at some of the other websites that were doing Q&A, that were doing questions and answers at the time uh, we started Stack Overflow. And um, they were in pretty um, poor condition. This is uh, answers.yahoo.com, which is still larger than us, which is the largest website for questions and answers. And it has um, some things that seem like questions, like what do I use to clean my coffee maker? Um, but there are also questions like what are you listening to? Um, what was the last thing you ate? I don't, I mean, these are, these are questions technically, um, but I don't know what they're doing there. Um, uh, can I die from car carbon monoxide? Uh, no, you can't. It's okay. It's perfectly safe. And uh, 
none of these things really make, make sense in the context of questions and answers uh, until you get to the last one which, it, on there, which is I keep forgetting to do my homework, and then you realize that this site, answers.yahoo.com, is for students, is for kids. It's for teenagers, and if you analyze the demographics, it's teenage girls at home after school having conversations. It's not really a serious question and answer website. They're having conversations on Yahoo Answers because they don't want to have them on Facebook because their parents will see. They don't, didn't want to have them on MySpace because creepy people would ask them questions. Um, Answers.com uh, was sort of the second largest um, Q&A website. Again, sort of meaningless questions. Um, what kind of attorney is needed for ad advice on getting somebody you know committed to a mental institution? I kind of like that question. Um, but some of the questions don't, um, don't, even, don't even make sense here. Once again, uh, a site with kids. Um, Askville was uh, purchased by Amazon a long time ago. This site doesn't get very much traffic, but um, it's all um, pretty terrible. So. There's uh, uh, a bunch of questions that are, again, not really meaningful to anybody. Um, Stack Overflow, on the other hand, this is a screenshot of Stack Overflow from this morning. Uh, and the minute you see that, if you're not a computer programmer, you're not going to understand a single word that, that is there. None of that will make any sense if you're not a programmer uh, of, of great uh, you know, uh, skill, essentially. And, um, what that immediately does is drives away all the non-programmers, and that's exactly what we are trying to do here. We're trying to get uh, the best programmers in the world to participate on this site and everybody else to just go away. Um, we have a lot of sites like that. There are over 100 sites in our network now on different vertical topics. This is a site about Judaism. And again, you could know an awful lot about Judaism and look at this site and not understand it because it's a site for experts on Judaism. And so if you go here and you are an Orthodox Jew and you have studied the Jewish laws in great detail, you'll say, oh, that's interesting. This is really a site for me. On the other hand, if you go here and you're a dabbler in Judaism and you want to ask whether Jews believe in Jesus or something simple like that, you'll discover that you're probably in the wrong place. Um, this is a site for statistics. Again, if you don't know any statistics, it's completely hopeless. Um, these guys, um, this is the Askville math site. And if you look at it, there's a couple of little clues there as to what's going on. There's a question that doesn't make any sense. What is the size of a plot in the Caribbean? I don't know which plot. Um, there's a question that says, hi, so here's my problem. I'm 23 years old, didn't really attend high school, and know only super basic math, meaning plus. So again, uh, clearly not a site for mathematics. Um, and then there's some spam there. Apply for apartments online was posted 13 hours ago. And the only thing that tells you is that 13 hours have now elapsed and nobody has deleted the spam. Um, so nobody really cares about the site and anybody that comes to this page will leave. And in its attempt to be as inclusive as possible by making a site that can be used by everybody and is friendly by everybody, it actually attracts no one. So for comparison, here is one of our four math sites. Um, this is the one that covers research level mathematics. And I don't even understand a, a single word on that page. But obviously, if you were a mathematician in group theory, you would go to the site and say, oh, look, there's a lot of questions about group theory. And you'd start reading them. And you'd say, wow, these are really good questions. These are some advanced group theory researchers that are on here. This site is for me. Um, so every group is essentially whatever the group is, the website, the room, the uh, community, it's uh, accidentally or not accidentally telegraphing messages about who it wants to join and who it does not really care about. Um, so there's some other principles that we, that we went to, similar to the principle of giving you a first impression that attracts the audience we want and pushes away the audience we don't want. Um, there's some principles which some of you, many of you are familiar with on which Stack Overflow is built. Um, the first and most obvious one is voting. Um, this barely uh, requires an explanation. People vote for questions. People vote for the answers that are the best. Um, and that, all that voting turns into reputation. The reputation gives you a way, just like in society, you have a way of showing how important you are and how respected you are, what they call in the US Army fruit salad that you wear on your shirt because it looks like fruit salad. Um, and, uh, and, and these are our top users, and every user has um, you know, like a little card that shows a whole bunch of information about their participation on the network, which is basically their fruit salad. So when you start out on Stack Overflow, you only have one reputation, and there's your name. Uh, and you get one just for getting your name right. 
Um, over time, you realize that you can customize the picture that appears. Instead of getting those little, little triangles, which appear by default, you figure out how to customize your pictures. You start to earn some reputation. You start to get badges. Um, you start to get more and more reputation. When you have a lot of reputation, you can write a whole card about yourself, uh, which you can uh, customize. Um, this is our number one user. This is from quite a while ago. He has a lot more reputation than that right now. But everywhere you go on the site, you're carrying around this little identifying card that shows everybody who you are and how awesome you are. And um, you can even get that little diamond, uh, the little blue diamond you see at the end of the name. That means you're a moderator. Moderators have to run in an election and win an election. So you are actually elected by your peers to be a moderator on the site. Uh, and all of this stuff is just a way of presenting yourself to the world that you earn. Um, and, and everybody does something when they wake up in the morning when they decide what clothes to wear, what hat to wear, and um, you know, whether to just wear one wife beater t-shirt or also to have an emergency backup wife beater t-shirt in your, in your belt. Um, this is the Shah of Iran. Again, attempting to show everybody just how, how bloody important he is by wearing a lot of fruit salad on his chest. Uh, we've got badges on Stack Overflow, another way of showing how awesome you are. And all of that leads on to Stack Overflow Careers, which is a site where you go to get jobs. Uh, and essentially to use that reputation that you earned on Stack Overflow in the real world to get a better job as a programmer. Um, every society has government. As soon as you have three people, you have some form of government. It may be serious, it may be silly. Uh, we have pretty serious government and consists of various aspects. But in order to make Stack Overflow scalable, we decided that the government has to be mostly done by the people. And most of the quote unquote policing of the site, the management and day-to-day and, and -day, uh, uh, moderation of the site is done by users on the site who have earned a certain amount of reputation, which, by which they have proven to us uh, that they have uh, enough knowledge of the system to be trusted with certain operations. So for example, once you've earned you know, 1,500 reputation, then you have the privilege of creating new tags. Uh, all of this government stuff has to have a conversation, a place where the um, real heavy-duty uh, Stack Overflow nerds spend their time talking about Stack Overflow. Um, and that happens on, right here on Meta Stack Overflow, which is a site about Stack Overflow. We very early on decided that Stack Overflow itself is not on topic for Stack Overflow because Stack Overflow is only about programming and is not also about Stack Overflow. So we made a different site called Meta Stack Overflow where we discuss Stack Overflow and that essentially becomes kind of the real-time communications channel through which government happens. People tell us what they want, people suggest things, and, and that discussion occurs among the senior members of the community. There's also the equivalent of the police radio, which is a live chat room that runs 24-7, and there are multiple chat rooms for every, uh, for every site. You can make your own, and it's a place where the moderators, in this particular one, Teacher's Lounge, the 350-odd moderators that we have on the system are actually talking live all the time and dealing with sort of real-time threats as they come up. Um, much like a police scanner, they're also essentially you know, making friends and being social. And we have a blog, which everybody has, but that's sort of the equivalent of the congressional record where we publish things um, that we've changed. All this government stuff generates law, the laws of the site. And the laws of the site are kind of one of the most interesting aspects of Stack Overflow, the rules, most of which actually evolved, which we didn't think of when we launched Stack Overflow, but which kind of the government, the people on Meta, uh, came up with. Um, our number one rule is we hate fun. Uh, Stack Overflow is not for humorous things. It's not for uh, conversations. That's a really important point. We never would have figured out that having a conversation on Stack Overflow is a bad idea. Um, but it turns out that conversations are sort of useless to people that find them as a result of a Google search result. 99% of the people that are visiting Stack Overflow are there because they typed a programming problem into Google and they landed on Stack Overflow. And we exist not to get an answer for the original person who asked the question, although we do that, we exist for the 100 people that are going to find that answer as a result of a Google search, or 1,000 people that will find that answer as a result of a Google search. So we don't want to see a lot of conversation on Stack Overflow, which is just going to be irritating and annoying and useless to somebody who finds that conversation as a result of a Google search. Um, just this morning, I was trying to figure out where the arrivals lounge was at the airport at Charles de Gaulle. And I, um, and I was searching on Google for arrivals lounge, CGG. And I was finding all kinds of conversation on Flyer Talk, which was a forum. And the first one was somebody saying, where's the Arrivals Lounge? And it was from 2001, and that obviously was not correct anymore. And the second one was an endless conversation in which somebody was saying, well, this has already been talked about endlessly. Why don't you go search? 
in the archives. And this was useless to me on a mobile phone. This was not very helpful. And the conversation that actually had the answer was like seven pages long, and the answer was like on page three or four. And this is a very, very irritating experience on a mobile phone when you're walking through customs. So um, the Stack Overflow experience is quite different. Stack Overflow experience is we get you a page that only has answers. There's no conversation. There's nobody saying this has already been asked before. Um, there's just a list of answers sorted by the community so that the best answer is always at the top. And the way we do this is by having all kinds of rules that have evolved and all kinds of laws. And the most famous rule that we have is sometimes we close a question. Um, sometimes we put it on hold. We just say this question is not good enough. You have to work on your question before we can answer it. And most questions that go on hold stay on hold for an awful long time. But some typical reasons a question might be closed, which means we don't want answers, we want it to go away are uh, that it's a duplicate, the question's already been asked before because we don't want people searching on Google and finding 10 results and they don't know which one to go to. Um, we don't want off-topic questions because we don't want people seeing a Stack Overflow answer and thinking, oh good, a programming problem has been solved for me and clicking on it and finding out it's about fruit or something that is not related to programming. Um, unclear what you're asking, it very often happens that people write in, in coherent questions. Um, they don't speak English very well. They don't understand their problem very well. They're not really programmers. They might be students, and we have no idea what they're talking about. Um, too broad is when you ask a question that requires an encyclopedia a a as its answer, or even a book, where you say, how can I get started programming? And the correct answer would be a book or lar larger in length, and you're not going to get a good answer, so we don't even want that on our system because uh, you can't. And the most interesting one is opinion-based. We don't want to ever see questions that are based on opinions, and that primarily comes from a belief that uh, opinion questions lead to conversations, and conversations generate um, very little new information. So we close questions like this is a person asking what to do when the toilet doesn't work in their company, although it is a programming office, that uh, doesn't mean that we care if the toilet doesn't work. Um, we close questions like this debate over whether web forms is better than MVC developer. Um, we close questions like this guy who's just asking for um, some ideas for, for an app that he can write. Again, conversation. We called it not a real question. Um, and we close questions that, that are useless to the rest of the world, even if it might be useless to you. I'm missing a bracket somewhere. Here's my 900 lines of code. Find the missing bracket for me. This question could have been cured in five seconds. It could be, I have some code that looks like this. I'm pretty sure I'm missing a bracket. How do, how, when I have code that looks like this, what techniques should I use to find the answer? But instead, it was like, solve my problem for me right now. And that's OK somewhere else. We don't want to do it because if anybody ever lands on this as the result of a Google search, it will be useless to them, guaranteed. And so we don't want it on our system. Um, so that's it in very, very brief, uh, brief terms. That's sort of some of the anthropological approaches and the society building approaches that we took in building Stack Overflow that I think made it successful and I think made it different um, than any other online forum. Um, I don't, I'm out of time, but if you want to learn more, um, there is a uh, much longer and more detailed version of this talk um, that you can find on YouTube, and I will tweet a link to it. Follow me on at Spolsky. Um, if you have any questions, also, I don't, we're, since we're going over so much today, I will stop. Um, but if you want to come talk to me, if you have any questions, uh, immediately after this talk, I will be downstairs at the, um, at the Stack Overflow Careers booth, which is in the expo room in the back right-hand corner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joel.